Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. In the last episode, we cleared the Palace of Darkness, the first dungeon of the Dark World, and rescued one of the Seven Maidens. In today's episode, we are going to do some item collecting here in the Dark World, and a little bit in the Light World as well. In order to progress beyond the uh, Palace of Darkness area of the Dark World, you need to have either the magic hammer that you get in the Palace of Darkness, the treasure, the dungeon item we got last time, or the flippers. The game probably does not assume you have the flippers at this point, especially if it's your first time playing, but I like to get the flippers as soon as possible because it enables you to reach the uh, waterfall of wishing, so I can get the fireproof shield, upgrade the magical boomerang, all that good stuff. And it just makes traveling in certain areas a lot easier. You do require to- you are required to have the uh, flippers for the uh, next dungeon, so it's not something to put off much longer. But anyway, take care of the uh, hula skirt chomps here. I don't know why I felt the need to finish that guy off, he was just bugging me I guess. But anyway, so over here we have a bit of a crossroads. You can see the dock on the screen right now. But after I take care of this weird tentacle-y thing, we look down here and there are some pegs here in the way. So if I wanted to travel by land, I could use the magic hammer to pound a path forward, but I want to actually head to the water. Because I want to head, head over to the Dark World version of Lake Hylia. Because there's one or two secrets and I've got- I'm almost at max rupees, so I want to make a quick stop at the uh, Waterfall of Wishing. Or not the Waterfall of Wishing, the Pond of Happiness. To uh, upgrade my bomb and arrow capacity further. We got these Cyclops Zoras and these flying creature things that like to drop bombs. I'm gonna switch over to my magic mirror now. We have this suspicious circle of rocks and a bomb guy over there. I'm going to warp back into the light world from here. And now we're on this elevated landmass that we couldn't reach before to get heart piece number, what is this, 13, heart piece 13. And now, uh, instead of going back into the sparkly vortex, which would take me back to the dark world where I exited from, I, I am instead going to jump down into the water and swim over here to the Pond of Happiness. I'm going to uh, upgrade my bomb capacity and my arrow capacity. I'm going to do this off screen because it can be time consuming, so I will meet you guys back when I exit the, exit the cave. Alright, and I'm back. So now I have my uh, bombs at their absolute maximum capacity at 50, and arrows are at 55. I only pretty much need just 200 more rupees to, in order to uh, fully max out what's left of uh, my uh, ca arrow capacity. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention before, the last time I was here, is that uh, the final time that you upgrade a certain uh, item, like either it's bombs or arrows, uh, it will be... Uh, the uh, amount that you can increase it by will be uh, 10 for the final time. That kind of signifies that it's the last one. Anyway, I really could have used my sword beams. It's not that big a deal, though. I'm actually going to go this way now. So you might be asking yourself, Phoenix, you know, you, uh, you jumped down from that ledge, so how are you going to get back into the Dark World? Well, there are two ways that we know of to enter the uh, Dark World. There's the... Uh, well, you can go to Hyrule Castle. The uh, front gate will uh, open the way. Uh, you just walk, try to enter Hyrule Castle, and you'll automatically wind up at the that pyramid structure at the begin in the very center of the Dark World. Or we could go back to Death Mountain and take that portal that we used to reach the Tower of Hera. But that that's pretty counterintuitive. We can't make it back down here if we use that one. But there are other ways to get into the Dark World. I'm going to use this magic hammer, for instance. They lift this rock and open up another portal. Yeah, there's hidden portals throughout Hyrule. It's not just the two that we know of so far. There are multiple ways to enter the Dark World. We got these uh, weird... Uh, you gotta watch out for that thing with the grabby tongue, because that thing can steal items from you. I think if you have the regular shield, it can actually steal that shield for you from you. Anyway, over here is the entrance to Dungeon 2, but... Or, uh, the Swamp Palace, but we're not gonna go there just yet. There are a few things I want to do first. Anyway, this way leads to the Swamp of Evil that has no entrance or means of escaping. So I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to get as close to it as I can. Ah, crap, these things hit hard. It's too bad I don't have a means of, uh, you know, some kind of armor to uh, reduce the amount of damage I take. That would be nice, but oh well. Anyway, we have this suspicious-looking uh, patch of ground surrounded by these pegs. It doesn't matter if you pound them all off the hammer. Nothing special happens when you do it. 
I guess I'm just doing it just for the fun of it now, but see, nothing happens. But if you pull out your mirror and warp back to the light world... We're here on this raised elevation outside the desert, and now we can finally access this, uh, this little monument statue thing, uh... But it's in Hylian Moonspeak, so we need the Book of Mudora. So if we hold up the Master Sword, we can get the magic of Bombos. It's like, okay, it looks impressive so far. And we just set that buzzard on fire. And now we have acquired the Bombos Medallion. So we can use it to cast a magical uh, spell that will damage all enemies on the screen. But it costs a bit of magic, so you have to watch yourself with that. So now I'm going to head back into my little vortex here and return to the Dark World. Because there are a couple other things I want to do before accessing the dungeon. Since we have the power glove, we can actually li we can lift some of these uh, lighter d green uh, stones, like this one up here, and we can access different parts of uh, of the uh, what used to be the Golden Land. Take care of that moblin. There, right, I got one heart back. Oh, and hey, on on this screen, there's a little something I want to demonstrate as well. First, I'll take care of this soldier guy. I don't really know what his name is. But if you go up to this tree, you notice that its eyes are kind of following me. If you walk up to it, though... Whoa! Ah, he spat out a bomb. Ugh, jeez. But now, after he did that, you can actually talk to him. So he used to live... He lived in the Lost Woods until he wandered into a magic transporter. So that's basically a clue that says that, hey, you know, there's a way into the Dark World around the Lost Woods. So we might just have to find that sometime, maybe. I don't know how this guy wind up, wound up all the way down here, south of uh, the Lost Woods, of, south of the village at that. But anyway, not all of the trees are friendly. This guy has eyes and he's spitting too, but you talk to him and he's just all irritable. It's like, fine, you know what, take that. Haha. -ha. Oh, whoops. I kind of, uh, I drew the aggro on myself that time, but oh well. Anyway, I want to head over to the Haunted Grove, or at least the Dark World version of it. Because there's a... Well, there's a mysterious guy over here. Oh, hey, there's like a fox person sitting on this tree stump. Hey, man. After wandering into this world, I turned into this shape. I enjoyed playing the flute in the original world. I guess we're just having a conversation. There was a small grove where many animals gathered. I want to see that place again. I buried my flute there with some, fo some flower seeds. Will you try to find it for me? Okay, sure, why not? I don't know why you felt the need to... Uh, to uh, bury your flute, you know, it'd get all dirty, I would think, unless you stuck it in a box. Maybe is it like a time capsule? But now we have a shovel. You may now call me Shovel Knight. So let's do some digging for shovelry in the light world, though. So let's pull out the magic mirror and warp back to the haunted grove right around here. Yeah, we have the specter. You know, that g fox guy is like the real version of this uh, ghost person playing the flute here. Anyway, let's pull out the shovel and do some digging right about here. And we acquired... Well, they call it the flute, but this is more of an ocarina. Yeah, see, they had ocarinas even before Ocarina of Time. They just didn't call it that. I believe this... It's uh, an ocarina-shaped uh, item in uh, in uh, Link's Awakening as well. But anyway, let's return to the Dark World through our little sparkly vortex. Our two-way door. And hey, dude, you, you, you don't look so good. What happened? Your legs are all, like, tree stumpy. Thank you, Phoenix. But it looks like I can't play my flute anymore. Please take it. If by chance you go to the village I lived in, please give it to a tired old man you will find there. Well, my mind is getting hazy. Please let me hear the sound of the flute one last time. All right, well, I guess we can honor this guy's wishes. Something weird is happening to him. I don't fully comprehend what's going on here. I don't know if this is like a Japanese folklore kind of thing or just something that they kind of started but didn't, you know, flesh out the explanation for. But after playing the music to him, the guy transforms into a tree when he was already turned into a fox person. I don't get it. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't really fully get that one, but I accept it for what it is. I played this game too many times to question it now. Anyway, let's work our way back up this way. We cannot access the village in the Dark World at present because the way forward is blocked by this big stone that's too heavy for us to lift even with the power gloves. We're playing with power, but it's just not enough. Anyway, might as well pick up some rupees. This is a mini game that involves shooting arrows at targets. I don't think you get anything important besides rupees here. 
I'm pretty sure there's no heart container involved. I'll have to, or heart piece, I should say. I'll have to look into that again later, I guess. If, if, if I'm wrong, I'll have to go back to it later anyway. But I do want to tackle this little mini game here. This is why I didn't spend all of my rupees at the Pond of Happiness. Because I want to go to this treasure field. I have to dig as many holes as I can in 30 seconds. And anything we find, we get to keep. And it's only 80 rupees to play. Now, you, usually you can make up more than 80 rupees if you dig the right spots. This is all randomized, and there is a heart piece here. I'm gonna, in my practice run, I actually got the heart piece on my first try, like on the very last hole I had. It was nerve-wracking, and I really wish I was recording that session, because that would have been nice. There are speedrunners that would kill for that kind of luck. But I do want to dig, so let's start digging. It's time to steal thy shovel for shovelry. So let us strike the earth. And work our way through here. So far I'm not having the greatest luck of what I'm finding, but if I get the heart container, I don't care about the rupees. Rupees will come on their own. But here we go, we're starting to get some red ones. Yeah, we pretty much just about got everything. Ah, crap. Don't click the same holes you did already, Link. Come on, where's the heart piece? Again, it's all randomized. Ah, nuts. Nuts! Oh, well. Okay, so now you have to leave the screen and come back to reset the field, and I'm going to try it one more time on screen. If it doesn't work, then I'm just going to keep doing it over and over until I succeed. I've seen, like, you know, people do this like 20, 30 times without any luck, so I am hoping that I do better than that. So let's, uh, let's try it one more time on screen. You know, here's hoping. If nothing else, I hope I at least make my money back so I can afford to keep doing this without leaving to kill enemies. All right, we got a red rupee here. Another one. Ooh, two in a row. I'll take that. 60 rupees. Pretty much breaking even there. I'll take that. So here we go. Let's dig. On a side note, I, I'm a really big fan of Shovel Knight. I, I only recently started playing it. That's... Nah, but uh, if you guys are interested in seeing me eventually, let's play that when I have a means of recording from my uh, Wii Nintendo Wii U. Yeah, you know, let me know, because I am really interested in giving that game a go for Let's Playing purposes. But anyway, I'm going to continue trying this off screen, and I will be uh, right back. Hopefully not too long from now. Alright, there he is. There it is. We found a piece of heart, number 14. Took about seven tries grand total, including the two times that were on screen. I don't even care about the rest. You'll notice, uh, I really was raking in the rupees. I have nearly 600 rupees now, and I started with less than 200. All right, finally, that's taken care of. That took a little bit longer than I hoped it would, unfortunately. But anyway, there's one or two more things I would like to do before we uh, head over to the next dungeon. I'm going to use the magic mirror to warp back into the light world around here at around Kakariko Village. Gotta watch out for some soldiers. Yeah, they, they are roaming all over the place ever since the battle against Aghanim. Parts of the Light World are a little bit different now that the uh, wizard's been taken care of. The soldiers are still rampant, of course, unfortunately. But alright, let's dash up here. Oh, and uh, one thing that's changed since uh, defeating the wizard Aghanim is if you dash into this tree, bees come out, so uh, don't do that. I, I, I highly advise against it. I do want to head over here to this building, though, because the sleepy old man that the flute boy was talking about is here. So if we take the uh, flute out and play it for him... Oh, whoops. All right, there we go. Oh, this is my son's flute. Did you meet my son? Where is he? Is he all right? Oh, I see. Well, I could tell what you want to say by the look in your eyes. So let's talk to him again. Oh, we get to keep the flute, and he wants us to play the sweet melody for the bird in the village square. Um, okay. Well, uh... Alright, sure, why not? It's not the weirdest thing we've ever had to do in a video game. So let's head up this way. Here's the bird in question. We got the flute out already, so let's play it. So we'll... Oh, we're gonna go for the entire uh, melody, okay. So we'll just sit tight and, uh, perform. That was nice. Right, whoa, 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 what the? There was a bird inside the weather vane. Okay. 
Alright, I guess I'll take it. But anyway, uh, now that we've done that, if we play the uh, flute again... The bird will swoop down here and pick us up, and now we can quick travel to different points of the map of Hyrule. It's a real time saver. So that's unlocked a whole lot of potential for us. So uh, I'm going to head back over to our house now, actually. Because this is the... Uh, I'm going to go inside and... Uh, and uh, get my heart back so I have full, uh, full health again. And now let's head over back to the swamp area. You know, we'll, we're going to do a little bit of backtracking, head back, back over to the uh, vortex I revealed earlier today. Whip out the hammer, pound the stick, the stake, and open the way back into the dark world. So let's head on over to the swamp palace now. Yeah, you know, I could have done some other things, but you know that stuff will be there for me in the next episode or the next time we travel the world anyway. So. No harm, no foul. It's not, no, the treasure's not going anywhere. Ah, nuts. At least he could have done, whoa. Crap. Well, at least I got my heart back. But anyway, let's get a sneak peek of what's in store for us next time here in the, the Swamp Palace. All right, let's go down here. We got a path over this way. Uh, well, know where we can really go over here, but wait a second. This ladder's too high. I can't reach it. How am I supposed to get into the rest of the dungeon? How? Find out next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys next time.